Hi guys, Clary here, and due to popular vote, today I'll be showing you how to make your own mini clay dragons. I decided to make three variations using three colors, green, blue, and pink. If these colors seem familiar, it's because they are. You may remember my squid game video, which used a lot of clay, and you gotta use it up somehow. Now these pieces of clay will be for the body, legs, and head, while these pieces will be for the dragon's wings. Starting with the green dragon, I'm rolling out a ball of clay into a log with tapered ends. Taper one end into a point for the tail, and the other end will be tapered, then flattened to create an even surface for the head to attach to later. Now to shape the body by bending the neck up, as well as the tip of the tail. For the head, I'm rolling a small ball, focusing on one end to sort of form a teardrop shape. From there, we'll add indents for eyes and nostrils. Then using a flat sculpting tool, I'm drawing a mouth. I accidentally made an indent on the corner of the mouth, but now it kind of looks like it has cheeks. So we'll call it a happy accident and move on to adding little black balls for the eyes. We can now attach the head to the body using a bit of liquid sculpty. Press it in place and blend it to the neck with a ball pointed or angled sculpting tool. The face got kind of squished, so next time I'll add the face details after attaching the head. For the legs, I'm squishing a ball into a teardrop shape and flattening the edge to make attaching easier. Once the legs are on, you can blend with either a silicone tool or your finger. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Onto the belly, I'm choosing a darker green and flattening it out before cutting into shape. You can use your dragon as a cutting guide to better estimate the length you need. Once cut, scales can be added with a blade or a flat edge tool. Then after a little liquid sculpty, it's added onto the belly. I used a flat edge tool to press everything into place. And we can't forget about the little toes. For the scales going down the back, I'm rolling out another ball of dark green clay, but this time into a log the same length as the dragon. Add some liquid sculpty, then time to give your dragon a really long side bang. Or I guess you could continue to attach it down the rest of the body until it reaches the tip of the tail. From there, we're going to recreate the look of individual scales by using a flat edge tool to indent all the way down the length of the body. This is an easier way to add detail to your dragon, but since I'm making three dragons today, I figure I'll show you three different ways to make the scales and the wings. Using the same dark green as before, roll out a thin sheet and cut into your wing shape. I drew mine facing the same way since it seemed like it would be easier to tell if the wings matched each other. Then I just flipped one around to face the correct way. But technically, this didn't matter since I'll be making these wings the same on either side. To do this, I first add light green details for the wing support, and one down the middle to create two sections of the wing. Once one side is done, I lay another sheet of parchment paper on top and press it down. When I flip it over and peel the other layer of parchment away, the wings will stick to the bottom sheet, and I can now add detail to this side. Now to make these easier to add to the dragon, let's give these a little pre-bake first. And all that's left to do is to add some liquid sculpty to the end and push it into the body above the front leg. Same on the other side, and this dragon is ready for its final trip to the oven. Freshly baked, and our first dragon is done. The smushed face looks a little derpy, but it's not bad for a first attempt. On to the next one. Grabbing some blue clay, I'm rolling it out the same way as before, but I'm leaving it a little thicker since I want this to be a cute chubby dragon. After bending the neck and the tail up, I'm taking a small ball of clay for the head and leaving it nice and round with no extra shaping. Indents for the eyes and nostrils, and a smile accompanied with some chubby cheeks. We learned from last time to add the eyes later, so let's go ahead and attach it to the body now. Blend together with an angled silicone tool, and now seems like a great time to add the eyes. Time to give this slug some legs. And once attached, I'm blending them in as well as using a Q-tip dipped in acetone to both blend the legs even smoother and pick up dirt that the clay always seems to find. Another scaled belly gets added to our dragon, as well as some little toes, or claws, if you can even call them that. Now, for this dragon scales, I decided to play up the cute theme and choose to add rounded scales down the back. 
with these smaller scales on the head that get larger towards the middle of the body and then taper down at the tail. I added a dot of liquid sculpey to each one to ensure that they'd stay in place after baking. Onto the wings where I decided to make them a bit more detailed than the first, with this one having three sections of the wing instead of two. Once again, I'm adding the light clay color for the wing arms and flipping over to repeat on the other side. And same as before, we want to pre-bake these before attaching to the body. You can try and add them without pre-baking, but I guarantee you won't have a fun time. Now with the wings in place and secured with liquid Sculpey, it takes a final trip to the oven. I think this one turned out super cute, and I love the little cheeks on either side of the smile. The pink dragon is last but not least, and for this body, when I roll out the clay, I'm really trying to elongate the neck and tail to create a different look. The neck will be bent the same, but the tail will now be turned towards the front instead of flipped upwards. The head will be shaped more triangular by pinching one end of the ball to create a cone shape. And I figure there's no harm in attaching the head to the body now, since there was still a bit of squished features on the last dragon. I find that every new dragon I make gets easier and takes less time than the one before. I'm considering making more mini dragons to complete this half rainbow I already have. Maybe even one with multiple heads. I can definitely see this becoming an obsession to create my own little miniature army of dragons to guard my clay treasures. So let me know if that sounds like something you'd want to see. I'll gloss over the scaled belly and the toes since you've already seen it twice before. But the back scales will be something new. I cut out two thin strips of dark pink, which I will then use to cut out a bunch of different sized triangles. Then to set the shape, we're going to pop these in the oven for 5 minutes. Once out and cooled, it's time to break them apart and sort them in ascending to descending order. When you have enough, start attaching them to the body with a bit of liquid Sculpey. I'm using tweezers to place these since I knew my fingers were going to be way too clumsy for the job. Now continue along the curve of the tail, finishing with your smallest piece. Time for wings. These wings are a little different. They're less triangular and more of a long curve. Reminds me more of a fish fin than a wing, but I like it, and it's always another design for you to try out. And while I'm choosing to add detail to both sides of the wing, it would look perfectly fine on just one side, especially if you attach the wings closer to the body. Since I wanted the wings sticking out and away from the body, the perfectionist in me needed to have symmetrical sides. Not that I even succeeded in making both sides even, but the sentiment is there. Now pre-bake these bad boys and add them to the body. I put my dragon in the freezer so pushing the wings into the clay wouldn't disturb the shape too much, but I left the dragon in the freezer a bit too long so it was still a struggle to get them in. But once they're in, all that's left to do is bake our dragon a final time, and we are done. I think the triangular scales are such a classic dragon look, so I'm really happy with how this one turned out. So be sure to look out for future dragon videos. But for now, I'd love to hear which dragon was your favorite, or which combo would you have chosen for your custom dragon. But other than that, hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!